Sorry for the interruption. Um, for anyone who was watching the live stream, I had just started. Uh, someone called the church office, but it wasn't an actual call. It was a telemarketer. Anyhow, um, so reading the book of Esther, uh, it starts off with just this very uh, wild scene of King Xerxes wanting everyone to realize how great he is. And then in a drunken stupor, he's like, I want my wife to come in and just strut her stuff around all these other kings. And she's like, I'm not going to do this. And then all the king's advisors were like, um, no, we, we, can't, we can't let you know, women realize that they're worthy of anything because us guys, we want all the honor in our marriages. And so they literally had her de-queened because of this to set an example. Um, and so his pride and his desire to be seen and the men's pride and desire to be seen actually caused this very um, disruptive event and of the fact that they lost the queen um, all because of their pride. Um, but then moving forward, there is the story of Haman inside of this book where Haman, he just can't stand the fact that Mordecai doesn't just think he's the greatest person ever. And because of that, he becomes so obsessed with himself and so obsessed with his uh, respect, so obsessed with whether or not he's getting enough glory that all the events that happen inside of the uh, kingdom, he views through the lens of his own self rather than through um, a bigger view of maybe what's, what's good for the kingdom, what's good for um, the king even. Um, so then we have this event in chapter 6 where Mordecai, he's coming in and he's got his plan to just kill up. Uh, um, or no, Haman's coming in to the king and he's like, he's, he's like, I am going to get this Mordecai guy just brutally, just publicly executed in a way that's going to make every, you know, I, he, he was going to feel better. In fact, he had been to a banquet with the queen and everything was great. And the Bible says that he couldn't be happy until he saw Mordecai dead. But it's interesting, so he walks into the king's presence. And, and Haman should have known the events of things that were going on in the kingdom. He knowing that he's not the only important person. But he walks in, uh, and the king asks Haman, what should be done for the man the king delights to honor? And in verse 6 of chapter 6, Haman thought to himself, who is there that the king would rather honor than me. So then he devises this great scheme that's like, ah, this person should just be paraded around, dressed in the best thing, riding in the best. It's just so ironic from a reader standpoint that he doesn't get that this, this is not a good thing for him. Um, and so my devotional takeaway that I, that I want to challenge people to have is something that I see in continuous, uh, reiteration throughout scripture is check yourself you gotta keep yourself in the proper view that if you start viewing all the world's events through the lens of your opinion and your view and your honor and your glory you really are about to set yourself up for disaster and failure and um just as the king at the start of esther viewed <laughs> all the blessings that he had as something that he should then show off and it then caused him to lose a queen we see in the life of Haman that once we really do seek our own glory our own vanity our own desires and we view all of our events of life that way it is a very quick path to death so um now obviously very few people are in the position of Haman where we're right-hand man of the king of a country but um, each of us does have the capacity for selfishness and for pride and for wanting to view the events of the world through a self-centered lens rather than asking how am I part of a collective whole or a group or how do I help others around me better so 
let's learn from the story of Haman and not have to have the same end as him where we are um, publicly shamed and embarrassed and killed because we want our own glory and honor and pride and everything else to be seen and known and heard. Um, so that's that. But also, I just want to give a quick aside. Be in prayer for all the teachers, uh, school administrators, school boards. Um, this is a time that if you are a Christian, um, your, your primary duty is to be in prayer for people and to be asking for the Lord's will. As the Lord's Prayer says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And let's be people who are earnestly seeking and desiring the Lord in all things. Um, and that those who are Christ followers inside of the school, that they could be beacons of light and hope and love for everyone around them. All right. Have a blessed day. Bye.